Shannon, homelessness on Long Island, like many of our social issues, is fairly invisible. And I'm wondering if you could speak to some of the statistics um, affecting Long Island, particularly now that we have so many changes going on with COVID. Yes, uh, I think you, you used exactly the right word, Ellen, in that homelessness on Long Island is fairly invisible. Uh, you know, many of us recognize homelessness where, when we're in a large city or urban area, um, and we think of homeless as somebody on the streets with a sign asking for, for food or money, uh, and, and you don't see that that often on Long Island. And that's because our homeless uh, includes many families, uh, it includes many children, um, and and they're not openly in front of us. One thing that you might see uh, that is an uh, identification of, of homelessness is uh, when you see a school bus pulling up to a local motel or hotel, and that school bus is picking up children in the morning and dropping them off in the afternoon because that's home currently for that child or that family. Uh, so, so that's a, that's a, a key indicator of, 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 of homelessness for us. Um, Suffolk County, uh, unfortunately has a designation of, uh, one of the highest rates of homeless children in families, uh, across the country. Um, mm -hmm. part of the issue is simply a lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Homelessness on Long Island, our families uh, and adults are typically working. They are employed. They simply don't earn enough money to be able to afford market rent and food and daycare and transportation, uh, really just the necessities, the basics in life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, statistics do show uh, the you know, averaging out uh, cost of, of housing on Long Island uh, in order for someone to uh, work a minimum wage job on Long Island and afford uh, an, an average uh, apartment, they have to work 110 or more hours a week. Mm -hmm. So that's, more, more than two full-time jobs a week uh, at minimum wage just to afford an apartment. It's hard for us to count um, the homeless on Long Island because uh, of where they are living. Sometimes they're doubled up with family or friends. Uh, sometimes they're, they're residing in apartments that really are not meant for habitation. Um, they have no running water. They have no heat. There's mold issues, mildew, things of that nature. Our head count is typically around 3,000, 3,500 individuals, including parents, children, um, et cetera, at uh, any given night uh, on Long Island. I've always sort of thought about this. It's not really an economic, social uh, line in the sand, so to speak, as to who is and who isn't um, capable of being homeless. And um, that always strikes me because I think a lot of assumptions are being made about who is homeless these days. Um, I'd like to speak to uh, the eviction moratorium, um, wondering, it's going to expire, and I think it's January 1st, and I'm wondering how many people are, have been affected by the inability to pay rent during this period of time that we find ourselves in, and I'm wondering whether or not there's um, any information that you have regarding the numbers of people that are struggling to pay their rent right now? So we don't know yet what that impact is gonna be. Um, you know, we, we certainly, uh, we, we can't really even estimate uh, because like you said, there's been a moratorium on evictions in New York State uh, that is ending. Um, and there are certainly many families and individuals that could not continue to pay rent. Um, some landlords uh, are definitely more uh, understanding um, and uh, willing to work with their tenants than others. Um, and, uh, you, you know, I, I mean, I think in some ways we're kind of all in this together. Um, and, and so it will be really helpful if landlords are able to recognize that um, evicting uh, uh, a family um, right away uh, is going to directly impact them as well, because there's no guarantee that there's going to be another family or individual right. able to come right into that 
unit. So they could go months without rent. Um, whereas if they're able to work out, uh, you know, a, a relationship and, a, and an agreement with, with their current tenant, um, things might uh, be uh, much better for the landlords as well. Um, there are certainly resources available uh, there are different um, funding uh, resources like a rapid rehousing program, which is available to help um, uh, tenants uh, who have fallen behind on rent catch up on rent. Um, but but there, there are guidelines in, in place with, with those programs and that includes having to be able to demonstrate the ability to pay the rent going forward if you get the assistance to pay the rent arrears. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's going to be a, a real big question going forward if um, these individuals who were unemployed and fell behind on rent um, can can find employment and be able to work again. So then they could qualify for, for some re rapid rehousing type funding assistance, get their rent arrears paid, and then know that they can afford the rent going forward. For those individuals that, that can't show that they're able to pay rent going forward, uh, they're not going to be able to get that that rapid rehousing assistance. I think that we're going to need to see um, some greater uh, support streams uh, come um, from New York State or from the federal government because uh, this is going to be um, a significant crisis. And then in you know in 2021, uh, you know even if um, things begin to improve in, in other areas, this housing piece is, is going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. um that's sort of frightening to think about because <clears throat> your agency is really um, one of, I guess, several around um, Long Island that can support um, a situation like this, but every one of these agencies really has a capacity problem. And it's, um, as you just said, we are all in it together. And I think that, um, um, we'll be looking forward to staying connected with you on this topic because I think that while we don't necessarily see homeless in our streets right now, um, that could change significantly under this with this situation. And one thing I would just add, Ellen, in the sense, you know, organizations like Newgrounds that are really trying to help uh, those who are struggling the hardest, um, we're we're sort of facing this double whammy because. You know, we're being inundated with with a with a greater number of, of uh, clients that need our services at the same time that we can't do our usual fundraising uh, to raise the critical dollars that we need to provide our services. Uh, so so it, it's it's definitely, uh, you know, sort of a double whammy challenge. You're watching Opportunity Calls with Ellen Volpe, presented by ABA, American Business Associates. To learn more about ABA, visit aba-ny.com.